The Atlanta Hawks are in an interesting situation. Obviously, they have Trey Young, who's their point guard of the future, and in just his second season, put up 30 and 10 on 60% shoot shooting. Besides him, they have John Collins, who is averaging 22 and 10, shooting 40% from three, and improving on the defensive end. The Hawks also have young supporting pieces that have been improving as the season progressed, with guys like DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, and Kevin Herter. Additionally, the addition of Clint Capella will definitely bolster his team on both ends of the floor. Capella, though never being a big time scorer, does present Trey Young with another pick and roll big man, perform as well as a lob threat, and will definitely provide much needed defensive versatility for this team. Moreover, in this video, we'll be discussing what moves the Hawks can make this offseason to best position the team moving forward. But before we begin, if you like basketball content like this, be sure to leave a like on this video. Each like makes helps more people to see my content and helps me know that you guys like the content that I'm producing. Also, 97% of you guys are not subscribed, so let's change that today. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Additionally, many of you guys said that I sounded like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. It's an awful nice tale, Kanga. So I'm going to be trying to be more enthusiastic and less gloomy with future videos. So thanks for the constructive criticism and let's head right back to the video. So first things first, we have to address where the Hawks need improvement and it's safe to say that they need help in a ton of areas. The Hawks are 26th in the offensive rating and 28th in defensive rating. That's not a great position to be in to put it nicely. And yes, the lack of Clint Capella post trade deadline and the suspension of John Collins definitely affected the Hawks overall ratings in both areas but that shouldn't stop them from making additions on the, to the roster to help in those areas this offseason. What I found interesting about the Hawks is that they're last in the NBA in terms of three-point percentage, even though they attempt among the most threes per game. That's a recipe for disaster, and it's something that the Hawks have to address via free agency, as I'll get to later. On offense, the Hawks also struggle mightily without Trey Young on the floor. With him off the floor, the Hawks only post an offensive rating of 98.5. However, with him on the floor, they post an offensive rating of 112.6. That's also a recipe for disaster given that Trae Young can't play 48 minutes a game, and it's apparent that Trae Young needs offensive help, whether that be through Cam Reddish, Kevin Herter, and DeAndre Hunter taking leaps offensively to help off that offensive load, or them just getting reinforcements via trade, free agency, the NBA draft, or all of the above. With respect to their three-point shooting specifically, even though this isn't a lucrative year for free agents, there are guys that they can still target that can address the shooting deficiencies of this team. Guys like Joe Harris, Danilo Gallinari, Jay Crowder, Langston Galloway, and guys like that would be ideal. Some of these guys are obviously more attainable than others, but that's besides the point. But before I head into the defensive side of the ball and the NBA draft, I just want to go on a little tangent here, mainly addressing the Hawks' salary situation and potential trades. Given the fact that John Collins will hit free agency next offseason, and the fact that Trey Young will definitely need an extension soon after, and the fact that the Hawks still have to pay the other guys in Herder, Hunter, and whomever, ideally this would be the free agency for them to sign a major acquisition. The Hawks do have the cap space, but yet again, it isn't a lucrative free agency class, nor is it worth settling on a long-term deal with someone who isn't really going to move the needle for this team moving forward. And with respect to a trade, I'm not of the opinion that the Hawks should make a blockbuster move that acquires a lot of their young assets and draft picks. For one, as I alluded to earlier, we never really got to see this Hawks team actually in full form since Capella never played for this team post trade deadline and because John Collins faced that 25 game suspension. And secondly, even if you don't think highly of this Hawks core, the Hawks also more likely to keep this core and just see how it turns out this season than to actually make a blockbuster move barring some new news that will come after this video. What I'm saying is that the only instance in which the Hawks should actually make a trade is if there's a real game changer out there or if they want to join the Victor Oladipo sweepstakes depending on what the Pacers are asking for. If they can buy low on Oladipo, then he'd be ideal playing next to Trey Young assuming that he potentially gets back to the form he was playing in in 2018. However, I wouldn't give too much assets or throw the whole bag at that deal because we haven't really seen Victor Oladipo be completely healthy in the past like two or so years. Therefore, I'd be wary of making a big move unless it's a big game changer or they can buy low on Victor Oladipo. 
And now that that's over, let's talk about the team's defense. Right off the bat, Trae Young is a poor defender due to a smaller stature. But even though this is detrimental to the team, it should be up to the Hawks to surround him with pieces that will allow him to hide on the defensive end. DeAndre Hunter tries on the defensive end and both he and Cam can have the physical tools to become solid to even great defenders in the future, but they obviously have to grow better defensive IQ as that will grow with time. But even with that promise of them being great defenders and Capella presumptively helping this team defensively, this team should still look into free agency and the NBA draft for reinforcements in terms of defense. Jay Crowder and Michael Green are two guys I've probably mentioned before, but they're also guys who can also stretch the floor, but also help with that defensive aspect as well. Those are the type of guys that the Hawks should be looking for in free agency. As for the draft, there are a ton of scenarios that I could see playing out for this team. They're slated at number 6, but this draft can be very unpredictable based off previous selections. If the Hawks just want to boast of their perimeter defense, then Isaac Okoro would definitely be a solid option if he's available. He doesn't have the three-point shot down just yet, which isn't perfect, but he would definitely be a big boost automatically for this team defensively at the perimeter. Tyrese Halliburton is also a legitimate option given that the Hawks could really use a secondary playmaker to take the pressure off of Trey Young. Plus, he's not a guy that's going to come into the team and take the ball out of Trey Young's hands. He does have a wonky jumper, but he's proven to be a good off-ball player and very effective and efficient with or without the ball. Devin Vassal is also another great option, and the Hawks could even try to trade down to select him, but we'll just see what happens. There are just a ton of scenarios I could see playing out, and that's up to the Hawks, and more information to come out to determine which what they're going to do with that pick. And with that being said, comment down below what you think the Hawks do this offseason. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like on this video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you actually enjoyed this video. Additionally, you're not going to want to miss my next video. It's based off why NBA ratings are down and what the NBA can take out of the NFL's playbook in order to change that. And that's all I have to say. Yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned. No matter. Most likely lose it again anyway.